Hi everyone, this is Coach Mike and we're going to do an introductory lesson on the Open Rui Lopez. I feel this is a very uh, important way to start out because it teaches you everything you need to know about chess, mainly that the center is the most important part of the board and you want to get all of your pieces out, get your next piece out, get your next piece out, get your next piece out, get your king safe in castle, avoid trades. So, to start off, the best move is pawn to e4 because it opens up a line for the queen and the bishop to get out rapidly and facilitates quick development. Black does the same thing by turning the pawn with pawn to e5. So now the perfect move, no doubt about this whatsoever, is knight f3, getting the knight out, getting ready to castle, attacking the pawn. And the best thing for black to do here is to defend the pawn with the knight, not with the d pawn because that blocks his bishop. The best thing to get his knight out. Now he could play knight f6, but that's the Petrov. Uh, the Rui Lopez, the most famous opening in chess, bishop b5. That's the standard position. White is threatening long term and immediately. Bishop takes knight, pawn takes, and then knight takes pawn. But it doesn't work right away because black has two moves to uh, make the material even. He gets the pawn back with queen d4, attacking the knight and the pawn or with check, which is going to be lots of trades. And the other thing he could do, which might be even better, would be to go to g5, attack the knight and the g pawn so that white can never castle. So, as white is not a merchant and he doesn't want to make all these trades, um, he's not threatening bishop takes knight right away, but in the long term, everyone has to deal with that. So, when you have a guy, your opponent, with his pieces in your neighborhood, standing on your front porch, looking in the windows, you should usually tell him to go away. So, black plays a6, I did that rather forcefully. <laughs> and beautiful day here in Tampa, Florida. I have the sunshine. I'm getting carried away. Bishop a4 is the best move for white. Maintaining an x-ray on the king. The bishop is still checking the king indirectly through the skin of the pieces. Like when you break your arm, you go to the doctor, he takes an x-ray to see what's going on with your bones. If this bishop and knight, if this knight pawn ever went away, uh, black would be in check. So this is actually a threat that should be considered. But now black can finally do what white did. Get his knight out, carry the castle, attacking the four pawn. Now we're just going to look for this purpose of this lesson of uh, what goes on with taking the four pawn. White castles and ignores the threat. Why can't he take the pawn? Well, he can. And what he is expecting. Uh, this is a high percentage of draws in Grandmaster Theory. He's expecting White to play d4. But we have this offbeat move that's very tactical. Rookie 1, again, x-ray. I love x-rays. X-raying the king, attacking the knight. And uh, most players will gleefully move the knight to c5, attacking our treasured Rui Lopez Bishop at uh, a4, because bishops are typically worth more than knights. So I've got a surprise move here. Not that well known. Knight c3, ignoring the attack on the bishop. So, a, a player that's not a master would probably merrily snatch this bishop. It does put the knight on the edge of the board. On the edge of the board, knight covers four squares in the center. He covers eight. Picture the eight arms of an octopus. Uh, but now, instead of taking the knight that's uh, wandered off to Key West and he's there to be seen again, uh, we take the pawn at e5, setting up a disc out. Um, this knight can now go anywhere he wants that's going to check from the rook. So, black can take that knight. That's a beautiful variation for the queen. It's not for white. But uh, let's just look at the line where they take the knight and attack our queen. At this point, we don't move the queen. We don't take the knight. We go knight takes knight, check from the rook, and he won, attacking the black queen. Black has to interpose. And then, do we take the queen or do we take the bishop? Well, we take the bishop, because Disco still lives on the chessboard, and this knight is doing the windmill all night long, like Lionel Richie. Black has nothing better than to take the white queen. And now, of course we don't take the knight. We go, knight g6, check. He has to interpose with either the knight, where we just lop it off with check, or the queen. We take the queen, and now the material's even, except this knight's still in the Disco, doing the windmill, and this knight is trapped. So he tries to get away takes the knight. Do we recapture the knight? No, we're still in the disco. Knight g6, we bag a five-point rook, not a three-point knight. King has to go to d8, only a legal move. We bag the, uh, the rook, and now we've got a dead one game. Doesn't matter what black does, but if he tries to get away with the knight, the winning move, and you can never miss this move, always look at every check, every capture. Knight takes f7, and that is made in my country. Thanks for joining us, and I hope you tune in.